Today we're going to take a look at the URUAV Flipo 95, or is it Flipo 95? I have no idea how the hell to pronounce it, but you know what? It doesn't really matter because they don't sell it anymore. After six or seven months on the market, this thing is gone. It's out of here. So this video is kind of just going to be a rant video about products like this, why they flop, why it it can be really frustrating for someone like me to try to take something like this in and get a review out. So if you want a good rant video, kick, uh, continue playing this because that's what you're going to get out of me. So this is a pusher style Cinewoop as you could see here. And this is basically a clone of the Beta FPV 95X V2 or V3. And they did a bad job. They did a bad job trying to clone it. When I, when I pulled this out of the box, I realized that this mount here wasn't a standard kind of mount. It's literally, look at what they did here. They literally just screwed this into the camera as is. And my naked GoPro that I built will not fit into it. The Insta360 Go, the V2, yeah, it'll fit in it. You would have to get a zip tie or you would need to get a strap. That's really what I use to hold it in. And quite frankly, those solutions are ridiculous. And I saw some other channels do that. I saw them uh, zip tying uh, their cameras to this thing. Just, just include a mount like this. Include a mount like this. I don't know why they did this. I they, the, the only camera that this fits, and I saw this from watching uh, Albert Kim's review, is the Beta FPV GoPro case. It doesn't even fit. It doesn't even fit the camera that the the Beta 95X V3 was designed to hold, which is the SMO 4K. You would have. You would still have to zip tie the SMO 4K to this or come up with some kind of alternate uh, mounting solution. And if you don't have a 3D printer, then you're SOL. And there are a lot of us like me who still do not have a 3D printer. You are going to be stuck trying to use crappy solutions to keep your cameras together. So the, the 3D printing, the camera situation, is not the only issue with this thing. It was a sloppy release out of the box, uh, hardware and software wise. First thing, it came with a FreeSky XM Plus, and when I got it, the receiver was just hanging out of the quad, <laughs> literally just hanging out of the quad. So whoever installed it didn't take any time to mount it correctly or do that. And normally, if the price of something is low enough i won't bitch about that too much i won't be that upset about that because it's a not not that much labor to get the receiver in there and do that i mean you didn't you didn't even have to spend time building the thing right but it's just an example of something like this being delivered unpolished and if it just stopped there that would be fine but the tune of this drone is just not that great either uh, the motors will get a little hot here and there, and it definitely feels a little funky flying. Albert Kim also had the same situation with uh, his uh, Flipo. So you've got to play with the tune. You've got to play with the P and D terms. And I did, and I was going to do a video uh, about how I, I fixed the tune on it, did a little more on the tune, but... The reality is I just kind of stopped. I moved on and worked on something else because I was going to get, I was going to get a friend to help me make this mount and that never happened. So I could never get my naked GoPro on there. And at the end of the day, I just ended up zip tying this camera to the Flipo. And that's what I did. I flew it like that. I got video like that. And I just really wasn't super impressed. With the whole thing. I wasn't super impressive. You know, the fact that there is jello in the video produced by this thing shouldn't come as a surprise because, again, let's look at the way the mount situation is compared to the Beta 95X V3. Beta FPV, I'm sure, did not put the vibration dampeners in the front for fun. Okay? They're there to try to help filter out the jello. This has no such thing. The mount is just simply 
hard and um, it's really up against this camera which again this is just not a good idea the other thing about this again little small details that just add up the video transmitter the video transmitter table is wrong i was able to get a decent signal from uh, my uh, goggles to this drone but the video transmitter table is is wrong you will have to fix it when you get it it's just a it's just a pile of unimpressive stuff and i think it would just be worth it to either make the stuff right or don't bother to make it at all and i wish some of the manufacturers would do that i wish they would just stop making half-assed stuff like this and then it ends up in my hands and then it's like okay well well what do, well what do i do should i just get on here should i just straight up trash the thing like i'm doing now should i try to give it a chance and uh, see if i can provide something of value to the people who already bought the thing and are now stuck with it and i think maybe that's part of the problem i think maybe that's part of the problem is that uh, companies they release these things they send them to the reviewers and then maybe they hope that the reviewers will just fix it they hope that the people who are reviewing this will fix the tune they'll provide the vtx table the correct one for people they will maybe work on a mount so they're cool with releasing something like this and they think it's cheap enough that all that will be overlooked and people will just zip tie the cameras to them in the meantime to a quad like this and everything will be fine. Yeah, so that's it. That's the Your UAV, the Filippo 95. I hope you enjoyed my little rant. You know, what how do you how do you guys feel about this? Have you have you bought something like this where it looked like it was a cheap deal on a drone and then when you got it, it was nothing but a project? I really think especially for something like this, this strategy does not work because the kind of person that wants to buy something like this is just looking to take some good video right out of the box. They don't want to have to go through a half-ass modification session just to get this thing functioning properly and to take decent video out of the box. It's it's not, you know, it's not a freestyle bash or anything like that. And that's why products like this, they come on the market and then they're gone in like six or seven months. So I'm not surprised that they pulled this and uh, I'm sure they won't stop. I'm sure, I'm sure this rant will just fall on deaf ears, but I feel better after making the video of it. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this little rant, leave me a like, uh, uh, <laughs> drop me a subscribe. I appreciate it. And with that being said, I'm going to do some flying. You guys take care. Uh, tell me tell me what's going on down in the comments below. Tell me some of this stuff just absolutely frustrates you uh, like it does me. So, all right, you guys take care, and I'll see you around.